Okay, thank you, Henry and everybody for creating such an engaging uh, platform uh, for us to keep our collaboration going. And I also want to thank the participants for joining us. And uh, it is indeed a pretty interesting time, but I think we will be able to get through this as a strong team. So I'm very pleased to share you some of my own research on the quantum photonic. Henry, sorry that I changed my title without uh, telling you. Uh, uh, but uh, the slides remain the same. So we wanted to see how we can uh, get some big help from single photons for a lot of applications. Uh, before we get too excited about uh, single photons, I wanted to give you early warning that a photon is really nothing. A photon is a fundamental particle of light. It does not have rest mass and it is quiet. And, uh, they can peacefully share a single piece of fiber uh, over, over a long distance. And uh, they are pretty fragile. They can be easily scattered by uh, a fog, rain, and others. And indeed, the energy with a single photon is, uh, is on the order of 10 to the minus 19 joules. So imagine that um, a uh, light bulb can emit uh, that amount of photons per second. So in that sense, it is indeed nothing. But in the meanwhile, it is also everything. So a single photon can carry enormous, almost infinite amount of information. Imagine that you have a photon of one microsecond long. And if you zoom in by 1,000 times, you can see some feature. And if you keep zooming, and you can see the figures all around. So if you have the right tools, uh, you can uh, encode a lot of information uh, and a single photon contains, uh, uh, you can easily contain uh, 1 billion degrees of freedom for you to maybe to write an entire email on a single photon. So this is a lot by physics. But of course, we haven't seen that yet. So the big reason is that for that to happen, so we, we need to have the right tool to create such photons uh, that can carry the information and find the best way to propagate them. And uh, another key is that at the end, you have to measure them and to extract your information. So uh, that's what we have been trying very hard at Stevens. So uh, in my own lab, Quest, uh, uh, which is the laboratory for quantum enhanced systems and the technology. Uh, we have a lot of researchers and uh, we have a lot of equipment and we have been very fortunate to get uh, trust and the support from the federal government across different uh, de departments and uh, being able to build uh, a pretty uh, a wide spectrum of activities in nanophotonics quantum optics, uh, VGA electronics, and the software. So our secret ingredients is actually quite simple. So we hope to uh, conceive and develop innovative quantum technology. And in the meanwhile, we find a way uh, to implement uh, the technology with highly integrated photonics and electronics and uh, to build reliable system that uh, you can plug in and have and have fun without having to know too much about what's inside the box. So uh, indeed, so our recent uh, development, uh, especially in the quantum nanophotonics, actually, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I have no idea why my son was able to come in the room. Uh, okay, so back to track. So uh, with our latest development in the quantum nanophotonics, and we are really interested and confident in developing a whole horizon of different applications. And unfortunately, I don't have time to go through each of them, but Henry, so if you invite me back, I will be more than happy to talk more about it.
Uh, but uh, here, I just wanted to give you some interesting ideas. Actually, they are not just ideas. So we, they are uh, the laboratory research that uh, we are pursuing in the lab. So for example, we wanted to develop a quantum hearing. So imagine that you can send a pretty weak laser beam to hear a sound. Uh, like 10 miles away. So that's, I think uh, is no longer a dream. So we are making the control, at least uh, now we have done this uh, over about uh, 50 feet. So, so but uh, the technology that uh, we have used, we already allow us to go one mile. I hope that uh, to be able to report some more uh, progress, hopefully maybe by the end of this year. And a quantum say, imagine that you have such a smart camera that uh, can, can take a picture of only those uh, objects that uh, you are interested in, in saying. Okay, so, so, so it, it does not take a, a lot of uh, meaningless uh, pictures and quantum smelling and quantum thinking. So, Indeed, so we are working on the machine learning and AI and how to uh, utilize and uh, to utilize our quantum systems to uh, greatly increase both the speed and the, the data processing capacity. And a quantum identity, imagine that in the future, you have a credit card that nobody can copy, uh, can do, can duplicate, it is yours. So it is protected by the quantum loss and the quantum privacy as well. So there are a lot of uh, pretty interesting uh, uh, research going on in the lab. Uh, so in the meanwhile, so we are taking our uh, research outside the lab and uh, to implement a, cam a campus-wide test bed at the Stevens. So the, this figure shows the quantum uh, information network that we have established um, at the Stevens. Thanks a lot to the support of our dean and the school. So uh, uh, we are uh, we are going to put on the uh, beacon for quantum random numbers in the in this uh, 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 as a part of this network. So this is uh, uh, another pretty exciting research progress that we have made in terms of uh, uh, creating very strong interaction between single photons. So I think uh, we made a world record as to how strong the single photons can interact. So that has huge implications in room temperature quantum computing. So, so we we hope that uh, we can build a some uh, quantum computers that uh, you can put in your pocket in the future. So this is of course a a pretty uh, pretty stretching goal here, but I think we are making pretty stead steady progress on that. And this shows our uh, quantum photonic lidar here that it can actually can see through a lot of ops currents and can achieve sub-millimeter range in resolution and have huge sig signal to noise advantage. And uh, we can also uh, you, you, you utilize that for a lot of other applications such as uh, measuring the vibration of surface. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, so th this is what we hope that we can get. So not only that uh, we wanted to created the technology itself, but uh, we really, really are working hard to uh, create sweet homes for them. So we wanted to create uh, quantum value creation systems in a box with reduced size, weight and power, which is very, and, uh, very resilient so that if you drop it on the floor, you pick up, it can still be used, turnkey and the low cost, you don't need to spend $1 million to buy one of such, okay? So, so and, uh, and also we hope that uh, such devices 
can be scaled up and it can serve as a nice module for many different applications in a, in a wide spectrum of field. Okay, so I guess uh, I'm not sure how I am doing in time, but uh, indeed, I think uh, we can have a lot of fun with photons and uh, I look forward to many collaborative effort uh, um, with you. Thank you. Thank you, Yupin. Any questions from the audience? Uh, Yupin, uh, certainly uh, quantum information and uh, technology is uh, a key area of uh, national importance for you as well, right? Uh, so given the far-reaching applications and obviously implications, right? Uh, so what are the bottlenecks that we have to overcome uh, by the quantum science and the engineering and research community in order to really bring about a quantum leap in what we're do currently doing now towards where we want to be. Right, I think uh, at this point too, so we know pretty well about the quantum physics uh, for those applications. And uh, we also have uh, very nice theoretical development uh, that uh, uh, would uh, allow us to construct the system. However, the real bottleneck here is the uh, very nice engineering research and uh, development uh, that will allow us to pack the technology into devices and the systems. So most uh, quantum research and quantum technology development here at this stage is still mostly in a lab on tabletop, right? So they show very nice quantum effects, but in order for the quantum to really create a, a, a profound impact to our society. So we have to go through the development as we have seen from the vacuum tubes to integrated transistors. Okay, so, and be able to utilize uh, this highly integrated and uh, chip-based uh, uh, technology as uh, implementation. So I think, uh, yes, we really look at uh, innovative engineering uh, to bring us to the next step. And uh, uh, Stevens is particularly good at that. And, uh, and I think uh, we are looking at this uh, enormous op opportunities right at the Stevens and uh, to say uh, how we can contribute uh, to realizing this big quantum dream for everybody. Thank you, European. Certainly, we look towards your leadership in this uh, important research area.